स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Today I'm going to tell you about group actions. As the name suggests, groups are going to act. They're going to do things. And in this case, we'll be looking at group actions on sets. So let G be a group. Now, uh, until now, today, uh, today I've been giving a group. The group comes with the binary operation. and i've been denoting the binary operation by uh, you know uh, g dot h but today i'm going to reserve this dot for something else so the binary operation the group is just going to be denoted by g times h i'm going to uh, omit the dot when i'm multiplying things in the group okay so g is a group and it's going to act on a set x x is a set okay so a group action is a function from g cross x to x and uh, we usually denote it with a dot so given g in g and x in x we write the result of applying g to x as g dot x okay and this action to be called an action this operation must satisfy uh, two axioms one is identity axiom so which says that if you take the identity element of g and act on element x of x then it's equal to x so the identity element does nothing the second axiom is called the compatibility axiom it basically says that the action is compatible with the group structure so what this means is that if you take two elements of the group g and h and you multiply them together and you take the result of that multiplication and apply it to x that is the same as making g act on the result of applying h to x so this looks like associativity except that here g and h are in g but x is in the set x so that's it that's the definition of a group action to become more comfortable with this notion let's look at some examples so but yeah just before that so usually instead of saying a group g acts on a set x i'll just use this notation g then this circular arrow x so the motivation for this is the following if you take an element g of g then it gives rise to a function from x to x why are the action what is this function it takes an element x to g dot x so group action is a way uh, of making each element of the group transform the set x the transformation corresponding to the group element g is x goes to g dot x Okay, so let's come to some examples. The most basic example is the translation action. So we'll take a group G, and this case we'll make it act on itself. So what am I looking for? So I'm taking x is equal to G in some sense, right? So this is the x. so so what is my action become it becomes a function from g cross g to g and uh, it takes g i'll write here x just to suggest that this g is actually x and uh, well there's a very natural thing you can do you can just take g dot x to gx g and x are both elements of g i can take it to gx so let's check the axioms so if i take the identity element of g and act it on x 
that's just identity multiplied by x which is equal to x and uh, the compatibility axiom becomes g h acting on x is well i can use associativity oh uh, no well this is g h multiplied by x by definition and then i can use associativity to write this as g h x but that's the same as g acting on h acting on x so associativity takes care of compatibility for the translation axiom so this is an axiom, the translation axiom action so this is um, an action there's a slightly more interesting one which is also called translation so this is the left translation uh, there's something called right translation again uh, x is g but now i'll define the action a little differently i'll say g dot x goes to not gx but rather x g and then i'm going to put an inverse up here and uh, of course the identity axiom is still true because this is going to be x times identity inverse but identity inverse is identity and so that's x so the identity axiom holds but let's see what happens with the compatibility axiom and this is interesting and you see here this is why we need the inverse okay so by definition this is x multiplied by gh inverse but gh inverse is so if i want the inverse of gh then i claim it is h inverse g inverse because if you multiply this then this will be h cancels out with the h inverse and then g cancels out with the h inverse so this is x h inverse g inverse but that's the same as g dot h inverse x by definition of this action right translation which is the same as g acting on h dot x because h inverse x is just sorry uh, here this should be x h inverse because x h inverse is just h dot x I'm using associativity here. So we have these two left and right translation actions. The left translation action is given by g dot x is gx. The right uh, translation action is given by g dot x is x g inverse. Okay, uh, let me give you one more example. So the trivial action. This is a stupid action. You take G to be a group, X any set, then you just define G dot X to be X for all G in G, all X in X. And it's very easy to see that this is in fact an action. So this is an action where nothing happens. Um, a slightly more interesting um, action and something which we will use a lot is um, uh, the permutation group x. So a permutation group is by definition just a subgroup of Sn. So let H be a subgroup of Sn. So what is Sn? Well, Sn is bijections from the set n to n, right? So the elements of H are all bijections from the set. Uh, n is the set. Box n is the set. One dot 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 n. So this Sn, remember, this is the group of all bijections. From n to n box n to box n. So let H be a subgroup of n. So each element of H is actually a permutation. And uh, then we define an action. Let's take X to be the set 1 to n. Okay, then the action is just um, 
h dot i is h of i for all h in h i in n. And this makes sense because h is a permutation so it's a function from box n to box n so it, you can apply this function to an element i of the set 1 to n and uh, it's it's very easy to again check that uh, this is an action uh, the identity acts right identity of i but that's equal to i the identity permit identity element of the uh, group sn is just the identity function from box n to box n and then the other thing we want to see is gh so what is multiplication in uh, uh, what is multiplication in Sn? Well, it's the composition of functions. So this is G composed with H applied to I, but that is G applied to H applied to I, which is nothing but G dot H dot I. So a permutation group gives rise to an action on the set one to N. And now let me give you one more example, which is slightly geometric in nature. So uh, it's it's a special case of the previous thing. So uh, it comes from a graph. So remember, gamma graph. Say let's say with uh, vertices. Last time we saw the square graph with four vertices. We'll come back to that in a bit. Then, mm -hmm. odd gamma acts on the set box n. Why? Well, this is a special case of a previous example. Odd gamma is, by definition, a subgroup of S. Okay, so now the most important features of a group action are uh, the notion is, is, the, is the notion of an orbit. So let's talk about orbits. So let's say we have a group G and now this notation I'm going to use G acts on a set X then I'll define an equivalence relation. Well, I'll define a relation. Let's say that X is related to Y under G if Y is equal to G dot X for some G in G. So these are X and Y are in the set X. So what we're doing is we're defining a relation on the set X. We're saying that two elements of the set X are related if there exists an element G in the group, which takes the first one to the second. Now I claim that this is an equivalence relation. So I need to show that it's reflexive, uh, symmetric and transitive, right? So reflexive. So I want to show that uh, X is related to X. Why is that? Well, that's just because X is identity times X using the identity axiom. And let's show symmetry. Suppose X is related to Y then what we have is uh, x is g, um, how am I writing it? I want to write y is g dot x. And uh, let's apply, uh, 
g inverse to both sides so so if i apply g inverse dot y then that is g inverse dot g of x right but now i'll use the compatibility axiom over here g inverse g dot x but that's identity times dot x which is just x so what we've got is uh, if y is gx then x is g inverse dot y and so um, so this means that y is related to x and the last thing we need to prove is uh, transitivity so i want to show that if x is related to y and y is related to z then x is related to z so this is also quite easy so if x is related to y that means y is g1 dot x and if z is uh, uh, y is related to z then that means z is g2 dot y but i'll just take this first thing and apply g2 to it so g2 dot y is g2 dot g1 dot x but now i'll use compatibility to get g2 g1 dot x but on the other hand this is z right so z is g2 g1 this is an element of g so this means that x is related to z so this relation that i defined that x is related to y if y is g dot x so if x is related to y if there's an element of the group which takes x to y this is an equivalence relation the equivalence classes are called orbits more precisely they are called orbits or g orbits in x okay so much like uh, a planet has an orbit around the sun it's the path taken by the planet as it goes around the sun again and again and again uh, the g orbit of an element is the path taken by the element as it is uh, transformed by different elements of the group g okay so let me give you an example of uh, g orbits So firstly, if you take the translation, left translation action, so G acts on G by left translation. Then you can take the identity element of G. I claim that it is equivalent to any other element of G. Why is this? Because G dot identity is G. So you can get any element of the group G, which now is the set X also, by applying that element itself to the identity. So in this left translation action, the orbit of the identity is the entire set X. So the orbit of identity is the entire set G here. Oh yeah, so some notation here. So uh, if I take the equivalence class of X, I'll call that the orbit of X and I'll denote it by G dot X. The unique equivalence class containing X. And one more way of thinking about this is it is Y in X such that there exists g in g such that 
y is equal to g dot x. So that's the definition of the orbit of x. The orbit of the identity here is just g. So let's look at a slightly more interesting example. Uh, we'll go back to graphs. So let's take gamma to be this graph. Uh, last time we had looked at the square graph. I'm just going to make things a little more interesting by adding one more edge here. So we have four vertices and uh, ot gamma is a subgroup of S4, the permutation group acting on the set 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, now what is the orbit? Uh, so what are the orbits for the action of gamma on 1, 2, 3, 4? So gamma acts on the set 1, 2, 3, 4. So now notice, uh, let's write down, uh, so 1 and 3 are in the same orbit because there's this element of gamma uh, which uh, takes 1 to 3, 2 to 2, uh, 3 to 1 and 4 to 4. You can check that this preserves the edge relation. So basically what is this element doing? It's just interchanging 1 and 3 and fixing 2 and 4. So it's just this uh, reflection about this axis here, this diagonal axis. And uh, this element, it takes 1 to 3, right? So 1 and 3 are in an orbit. The orbit of 1 contains 3 and the orbit of 3 contains 1. And there's another element which interchanges 2 and 4. I'll take a reflection about this axis. So we'll fix 1 and 3. 2 will go to 4 and 4 will go to 2. And so this element will take... So so what we know is that 1 is equivalent to 3 and 2 is equivalent to 4. And I claim that 1 cannot be equivalent to 2. The reason for that is if there is any automorphism of this graph that takes 1 to 2, then 1 has only two neighbors, whereas 2 has three different neighbors. So so now if 1 goes to 2, then these two neighbors of uh, 1 must go to two of these neighbors of 2. But then there's also a non-neighbor of 1, namely 3. But then 2 has no non-neighbor. So it's not possible to find a bijection which takes 1 to 2 and is a graph automorphism just because the number of neighbors of 1 is not the same as the number of neighbors of 2. So in this case, the orbits are... One, three, and two, four. These are the equivalence classes. Okay, now talked about orbits. The other important feature of a group action is the stabilizer. So let's say we have a group G acting on a set X. And let's fix a point x in x. Then the stabilizer of x in G is defined to be, it's, it's denoted stab gx or sometimes it's just more simply g subscript x. It's defined to be those elements g in G which fix x. Okay, so these are alternate notations for the stabilizer of x and g. Now I claim that this is a subgroup.
of g. So I just need to check that gx is closed under uh, the product operation in the group and under the inverse operation in the group. So firstly, um, let's say if um, g and h belong to gx, then I want to show that gh dot x is equal to x. So gh dot x by the compatibility axiom is this is g dot h dot x. And uh, well, h is in the stabilizer, so h dot x is x. g is also in the stabilizer, so g dot x is x. So gh dot x is x. So this implies that gh belongs to the stabilizer. So the stabilizer is closed under the group operation. And also I need to check that it's closed under inverse. So if g belongs to gx, then what do I know? I know that g dot x is equal to x. Let's just apply g inverse to both sides of this equation. So I get g inverse dot g dot x is equal to g inverse x dot x but using the compatibility thing I get that this is g inverse times g dot x but that's the same as identity times x but that's the same as x by the identity axiom so what you get is g inverse x is equal to x so this implies that g inverse belongs to gx. So the stabilizer is a subgroup of the group that's acting. And uh, the group orbits and stabilizers are uh, connected to each other by a beautiful identity. So this will be our first theorem about group actions. So suppose a group G acts on a set X and let's fix an element X0 belongs to X. Then the number of elements in G, I'll denote the cardinality of a set by enclosing that set in these vertical lines, so like absolute value. So is equal to the size of the orbit of x0 times the size of the stabilizer of x0. The size of the stabilizer times the size of the orbit of any element is equal to the order of the group. Well, So uh, the proof is uh, as follows. So, um, so what I'll show is that um, let's let's just take g dot x. So for every x in g dot x not uh, I can pick an element gx belong to g such that x is equal to gx times x naught after all that's the definition of the orbit is the set of those elements which are related to x by elements of g okay and now what I'm going to show is that every element of the group G can be written uniquely in the form G is equal to GX times 
uh, gx times this is just multiplication the group gx h for some x belongs to g dot x naught and h belongs to g x naught so once you prove this uh, what you're saying is that there's a bijection between uh, elements of g and pairs of elements uh, in x cross uh, in the orbit cross g x naught what we're showing going to show is so there is a bijection g with g dot x naught cross g subscript x naught and so the result about cardinalities follows so let's prove that so i have this element g in g and i want to write it as uh, so let's just do some rough work g as gx times x naught or uh, not x naught gx times h okay so we want this now let's just apply both these elements to x naught and see what happens. So suppose this were true, then we'd have g x g dot x naught is g x h dot x naught. Uh, but uh, h dot x naught is equal to uh, x naught itself because h is in uh, g x naught. Uh, so but gx x naught by definition is equal to x. So what we get is that this x, this x whose gx we are looking for must be the same as uh, the element g x naught. So if I write g x naught is equal to h, so given g in g, let x equals g dot x naught okay so now we look for the h so what we have is that g dot x naught well that's x but that's also equal to g x dot x naught which is also x right and now we're looking for h so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just apply uh, GX inverse to both sides. But here we'll just get X naught, right? Because GX inverse applied to GX or test X naught will just be X naught. So what we get is that gx inverse times g belongs to well it fixes x naught so that means it belongs to g subscript x naught and so uh, i can rewrite this so so this is gx inverse g is equal to h for some h in g of x naught. In other words, g is equal to gx times h. So this is in this we have obtained a decomposition of g into gx times h and we've also shown that x was uniquely determined by g by just taking x to be g dot x naught and h was then uniquely determined by being gx inverse g equal to h. So I let you formalize this proof and write it down in full detail. But what this does is it proves the uh, that the each element of g can be written uniquely as um, an element of the form g subscript x and an element of the stabilizer. 
So that completes the proof of the theorem. Let me give you an example to illustrate this. So let's look at our favorite, the square graph. And then we have this subgroup ORT S. Uh, in S4. And I'm going to call this G. Okay, and now we want to know what is the size of this group G. And uh, last time we sort of painstakingly calculated it to be uh, 8, I think. Let's see if we, what we get from this theorem that we proved earlier. So what does our theorem say? It says that the order of a group, so you have a group acting on a set X, and the order of the group is the order of the stabilizer of a point times the size of the orbit of that point. So let's take now, so our X here is uh, the set 1, 2, 3, 4. And uh, so what is, and let's take X naught to be, uh, just the point 1. So what is G subscript 1? So what are the automorphisms of the square which take 1 to 1? Well, if you have a automorphism which takes 1 to 1, then you must take the things next to 1 to again something that is adjacent to 1. So 2 and 4 can be interchanged or it can be the identity. So there are two possibilities. It's either 1, 2, 3, 4, namely the identity permutation or the permutation that interchanges 2 and 4. So cardinality of G1 is equal to 1. And what is the orbit of 1? Well, we already saw that we have this rotation by clockwise by 90 percent, uh, 90 degrees, which is in the uh, automorphism group. And then you can repeat that, get rotation by 180 degrees, then by 270 degrees. And so 1, 2, 3, 4, they're all in the same orbit. Oops, this is 2 here, not 1. So the order of G, equals 2 into 4, which is 8. Um, I can do an even slightly more difficult example, which you would find quite hard to do by hand. And here let's take this graph, one of my favorite graphs. It's, it's called the octahedral graph. So it's uh, basically you have six vertices which I can call 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, but I put in some more edges, all vertices which are a distance, at least 2 from each other are also connected. Yeah. So this is, uh, so odd gamma is a subgroup of S6. And so this G now acts on the set 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I want to know what is the cardinality of this group G. So again, uh, it's easy to see that a rotation by 60 degrees is in odd gamma. That means you just uh, take 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5, 5 to 6 and 6 to 1. That will preserve the edge relation because this whole picture is sort of rotationally invariant by multiples of 60 degrees. So, so we can conclude that the orbit of 1 as before is all 6 points. So the only question is, what is the stabilizer of 1? Okay, so to figure this out, we let us just pay closer attention to the neighbors of one. 
so what are the neighbors of the of one they are uh, 6 2 6 2 5 and 3 in fact everything is a neighbor of 1 except for 4 right so now if you have an automorphism of gamma it must uh, take the neighbors of 1 to other neighbors of 1 but these neighbors of 1 themselves they form a subgraph they form a subgraph which is basically a square this red square that you see here so uh, so if you're going to fix one then you must uh, also the the uh, the automorphism must act on the vertices 2 3 5 and 6 as an automorphism of the square graph so because of this what we have is that uh, this is the automorphism group of the square graph i don't I haven't written down exactly what elements are in this group, but it's, it is the automorphism group of the square graph. So from this we get that the size of ot gamma is equal to 6 times 8, which is 48. Well, S6 is a group of order what? So that's 6 factorial. So uh, 1 into 2 into 3 is 6, into 4 is 24, 5, 120, into 6 is 720. So this is a subgroup of order 48 in a group of order 720. Okay, I'll let you um, understand this better by solving problems in the exercises. Um, but for now, I'll stop the lecture here. Thanks.